what's happening in 2017? I've already decided that the year is going to be freaking amazing. It's graduation year for me, and I've got to find a job. It's also my 24th year of life. Holy sh Are you excited to go out to New York? So came to party tonight. Oh yeah, hi, I'm Geneva. And what you just heard was my communication device. But if you think that makes me special or something, I tell you what, underneath it all, I'm just like everyone else. Cheers, Geneva. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hey Geneva, I've got some things for you. Got two red ones. Uh -huh. This one. Uh -huh. Bit more glamorous. Uh -huh. <laughs> I thought that was picturesque. Uh -huh. Okay, uh -huh. and then what about this one? So, a little bit more about me. I'm a girly girl. I love to shop, don't we all? Travel, hang out with friends, get my hair done, you know, that kind of thing. I would say I'm just like any other young woman. Mm. Just to let you know I can't keep still, but I will try my best. It's OK, don't worry. Oh, yeah, the joys of my disability. I can't remember when I last got a pedicure, actually. <laughs> it can be a bit of a mission to get your toenails painted. <laughs> I live with a tetraoid cerebral palsy, which is a neurological deficit since birth, consisting of speech production difficulty and involuntary limb movement. In other words, non-verbal with a physical impairment. Monday morning, reality check. And welcome everyone to a day in my life. A typical day for me needs a lot of planning. My communicator is charged, check. I've got my chair, check. My bag is packed and ready. Check. Text my support worker and tell her what time I need her. Check. This is amongst uni craziness and studying to the early hours of the morning. So where are you going for your lunch? That's Jocelyn, my support worker. She's a lot more than just a helper for me. I'm going to Robert Harry with Lana. We're good mates and have a lot of laughs. Yeah. She sounds a hard case. Yeah. yeah. Sure, I'll make this. To be honest, sometimes my life can really suck. I wish I didn't have to fight the battle of proving myself to people who don't even know me. I wish I was more included in society. This constant battle is my reality. Because I have a disability and non-verbal, many people think that I must be mentally challenged or have the mind of a child. It does really frustrate me, but I do understand. I have learned a valuable skill to ignore the ignorance of those people. But having a disability actually motivates me. I am currently in the last year of my communication degree and I want to work in public relations. I realise it's going to be tricky with this communication device, but I know I can do it. You might think that it's odd choosing to study communication, but here's the thing, it's because of my disability that I am the perfect person for the job. If anyone knows how to overcome the challenges of communication, it's me. <laughs> The cover letter I am currently writing is for an internship at a public relations firm.
the position is for two days a week, which would be perfect for me. I don't talk about my disability in my cover letter. I refer to it in my CV. I am fully aware that some employers may prejudge, but that does not stop me from pursuing opportunities. I guess it's true. Every little thing takes a lot longer for me to do. Assignments and just typing takes heaps of physical energy. It's like my mind is going 100 miles an hour with my body trying to keep up. I've sometimes thought to myself, am I really up for the battle? Can I be bothered? Then I think, yes, of course I am. I just need to find that perfect position that allows me to do things in my own time. I know that I can do it. I just need to be given the chance. <laughs> I was whangai, adopted. In our Māori culture, that's pretty common. It just means a family member adopted me as a baby. But I'm treated like anyone else in our big whānau. I'm studying a Bachelor of Communications. I'm just the one with the Australian accent. So when do you graduate? <laughs> I graduate in December. Yeah. Not long to go then. Oh. Do you do it from like the back page? Six. The key is to get the screws and bolts <gasps> into there, but then when you've got big fat fingers, hey Tala, yeah, well. it's just not working, eh? Oh. Yeah. It's going to be time for dinner by the time you finish doing that, those. Teamwork, it's teamwork. This is team building, isn't it? Yeah, it's okay. team. It's good teamwork. It was meant to be, and often people say we were destined for her. Albert and I have been trying to have children, and unfortunately we weren't um, able to conceive. Geneva was the third child that we tried to adopt. Uh. The, the two previous, uh, we had them for a little while and they were uh. taken back by the parents. Uh. That's a big smile. Two years prior to Geneva it was an emotional time for us. And that's not the only time you slept like that. My oldest brother and his wife was having a child. How old were you then? Seven. So they asked us if we would like to adopt her. So we said yes. No, I think you were two then. Uh. We waited in anticipation for her birth. <laughs> and in March 20th, we got the call to say that she was born. Geneva's uh, birth mother went through a difficult birth. Here you are, my darling. You're two mummies. Geneva had asphyxiation while her birth mother was giving birth. They talked about the complications, what it would mean for Geneva, the difficulties of her health. Didn't really do anything for me. She was a child and needed a family and we needed a family. So we took her on and I think we're beating, beating the system just by being, being a mum and dad. Apart from her watching her grow, it's uh, really something I can't, can't express. But she is our baby, so she got a good mum and dad out of it. <laughs> She's all falling into place. Everybody has had a role in raising her. I don't know about falling into place. It's falling. It was falling to bits, it was. <laughs> it's not just Albert and I and our immediate families. It's the community. Going on to step four. You're the only one that knows what you're doing. It has been like an iwi has raised our daughter. <laughs> This community has made Geneva be that confident person 
young Māori woman that is non-verbal to go out there and to strive for whatever she wanted. <laughs> Growing up with my many cousins was awesome. They see me for who I am. They don't see my disability. Do you have dishwashing liquid in there? I'm just one of the cousins. <laughs> I'm still expected to work in the kitchen and clean up like the rest of the whanau. And honestly, I wouldn't have it any other way. I'll get a um, spatula, Geneva. You can mix uh, it. OK. Now, the scones I'm making today are new, so I haven't made these scones before. This oh, tap no. isn't turning off. Right, cheese in the fridge. Why are they in the oven? Uh, Come on, Mum. Uh, English fluffy scones, they call it. Look at me. Um, uh, uh, how? OK, what? So, oh, I can't just turn that out. Sorry, okay. Right. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Right. Mum and I have a really close bond. She knows me better than I know myself. I don't always use my device with her. Sometimes we just sign. E. What? E for what? Yes, H, A, Shia. Sorry. We have our own language here in Nai. There's a lot of swear words in sign, but she does quite well. Geneva Dickhead. Been using that sign a lot lately. But she makes her own up. <laughs> Oh. Yes. <laughs> For me personally, I have had no problem using my devices. It has actually opened my world to opportunities, providing me a voice to communicate. Yes. Okay. Um. What? She's what? saying. She's saying maybe. Here, wera ea. What does that mean? That means like he's hot. <laughs> <laughs> it would be good to have a voice that sounds human with a Kiwi accent and can speak in three words. What? <laughs> hot <laughs> really hot. They say he tane puro tu. <laughs> In my dreams, I can talk and my voice sounds like my cousins. So I would probably sound like them if I could speak. <laughs> Oh, it's all right. Set me up. Oh, this is flesh. Oh, wow. Well. Hi. Hi. What would you like? Can. Sandwich. Damn. That's not what I meant. Embarrassing. Can I order a ham, cheese, and pineapple toasted sandwich, please? Okay, no worries. Anything else? That's all? Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What I love about Moana is she's not afraid to make fun of me. What do you want to suck us? At the end? And she doesn't treat me as someone with special needs. Did you not want to start dating this year? Yeah, because that's what we talked about, eh? And I said I was going to be your wing girl. Luana keeps wanting to sort me out with a boyfriend, but I don't really have time. I'll sit here and Maybe. sip on this. 
I mean, I think it's time, but I don't know. Yeah, but ain't you 24 soon? You know, you really should kiss. Just get out there, you know. She always expects me to come out on the drinking nights. No excuses. That we can start there, and then we can move down to K Road, see, because that's where everybody is. Go clubbing, man. And then you can put your feelers out, eh? Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know. Because my family has never treated me any different, sometimes it can be a bit of a shock when the rest of the world doesn't expect much from me. That's why it's so important for me to be connected to my roots and speak to Dale. Hey, honey. Mm. You're already dressed. <laughs> what? Did you have a good sleep? <laughs> Yeah. Say it, honey. I got the wrong glasses. I just have to put a shirt on. And then you're good. Okay. All right. And then do you so want to... So today's my first um, Tidal class. Hmm. Brush your teeth and then have a koi. I'm okay. super excited hmm. about it. Well, which one? Oh, well, smashing out the Vikings last oh, night. I yeah. Know. Yeah. That was yeah. that. And suits. I have always wanted to learn to Rio Maori to be able to converse in to Rio and about my cultural heritage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All my education has been mainstreamed and I am now where I am in this world where the time is right for me to learn my own language. So same old, same old for Bricky. Can I have banana on toast, please? And do you want it sliced or mashed? Mm. Mashed. Okay. <coughs> what day do you do to real? Wednesday. I think you'll power through it, darling. Like I said, you know more than you realise, you know, eh? Yeah. I don't know exactly how I'm going to be able to communicate in Maori using my device. But I have been starting to install the words I learn every week into my device and ask people to read off my device when we're having a conversation. We talked about when we meet someone for the first time, culturally it's correct to ask, where are you from? And how do we ask that in te reo Māori? No hea koe. So if we can be practising with each other. So Geneva's saying, Kei te tai hau auru, tāmaki makaurau. Kei te tai hau auru, o tāmaki makaurau. Right? She lives out west. She's a westy girl. Tana kāinga i nāia nei. Tēnā koe. Right, ka pai. The journey she's taking is a good start. There's going to be a lot more families out there that are going to follow Geneva and hopefully she'll be the one that will start that, um, probably developing a prototype of a communication device in Te Reo. Yeah. So I'm quite excited for her. Mm. OK, guys, I have to admit, I can't be cheery all the time. Uni might be going really well, but other parts of my life are a bit more challenging. So far, I have put out heaps of internship submissions. And you know what? It's been like two months and I still haven't had any responses. It's like I'm being prejudged every time. Sometimes it just gets you down. So how do you feel, Geneva, about waiting? You know, how you, how's this making you all feel? You know, you're on your last year of studies. You graduate this year, and I know that you want to get a job. I know I'll get work eventually. It's just a matter of when. 
I think I need to just keep applying for internships. Maybe it'll look more favorable when I do have my degree. Oh, yeah. I think that's a good idea, Geneva. You know, positive thinking. It's one day you have to get a job to to pay for me. <laughs> I'd like to think that she can get an internship in a mainstream environment that are prepared to, you know, look beyond her disability. The field that she has chosen in public relations, it is all about communications. And because being non-verbal, having to use the device can be seen as a bit of a barrier like any parent, uh, always fear for what lies ahead for their child. Even more so for us, knowing that she's got all these other um, issues that she has to face. OK, Geneva, you got to stop sulking. It's time to be positive. No point in wasting time like this. You know the story. Just remember back to when I was a kid. When I'm feeling down, I remember what my parents taught me. Most people with my level of disability use a wheelchair. I have the ability to walk, all thanks to them. Geneva was showing signs of things that she was able to move her body. We had a little trike that we would send to school and she would ride around the school in her bike. And that was her way of getting around rather than using an electric wheelchair. The school physiotherapist was really hesitant. The first few months was the hardest for me. I would often end up on the floor crying because my legs were so sore. <coughs> the physiotherapist didn't like mum at all and thought she was cruel. It just evolved from there. We thought, well, if she can move this body, there seems to be a coordination pattern going on. Let's try her walking. By the end of the year, I used my walking frame to attend the last school assembly. That has to be my greatest achievement. I knew from that moment that I could do anything. With Geneva hearing us talking so positively about what she could do, she believed in it herself and it's made her more determined that, yes, I can. Well, exciting news. I've just had an invitation to visit one of Auckland's most established PR companies. It's not a promise of an internship, Hello. but they've agreed to talk to me about my opportunities and who knows what this could bring. Hi, I'm Geneva and I'm here for a meeting with Deborah. Hi, Geneva, nice to meet you. Would you like to come through to the boardroom? Deborah will be here with you in a minute. Let me tell you about how we've um, designed the business. Uh, the next team down are fashion and lifestyle. So they work on brands like Farmers and Farmers Fashion and, and Dulux. It would be a dream come true to work in a place like this. The next team is the food team. So they'd be working on restaurants and wine. It's a good team to be on. You do a lot of eating with that team. <laughs> Holy sh Good. And then this team here, and here's your friend Sydney. This is our newest team. This is the content team. There's a space right here next to me for Geneva when you come work here. Of course, you studied with Sydney. Was she a good student? <laughs> OK, so far, so good. But next up is the sit-down interview part. Thank you Let's be so frank. Much. I want to know if I can actually get a job in this industry. From your perspective, do you think that PR is an ideal industry for people with disabilities to work in? 
I think um, it would certainly be challenging for some of the things that we're required to do. Um, and just the oral communication mm. is one thing. But so much of our communication now is written. We also plan projects. So for someone um, that has disabilities that needs more time to complete a task, um, then a planned project could be research, it could be writing, um, and simply manage it in a way that gives you enough time to complete the task to the standard that's required. This is so encouraging. I have to admit, I've had some doubts about my chances of working in PR, but now I feel more confident. That was your perseverance and resilience. Um, you would, um, you'd certainly get a, a door in for an internship. Thank you so much for meeting with me. It's just a lot more, a lot more challenges for her. However, they're exciting challenges as long as you can keep your head above. The water, you know, I believe that the community that she's grown up in that has given her a place of belonging, knowing who she is, where she comes from, that is, will always keep her grounded. OK, here's my latest update. After visiting the PR company, I sent out a bunch of emails. And you know what? I've got some real work experience. Writing an article for a well-known foundation? Totally awesome! <laughs> but today is the weekend. Time for the beach. Oh my gosh, so good to lie down. <laughs> so yeah, it turns out that when life gets you down, you can always get back up again. And things will turn out. I'm still reaching my dreams. And there is so much more for me yet. Would I change anything if I could? Yes and no. I would rather feed myself and dress myself instead of relying on others. But nothing is going to change in that sense. So I'll just continue to focus on what I can do by myself. And live life to the fullest. Today in the life of being me, Geneva Tino, Kakite. Well, I'm treated like anyone else in Albert Farmo. It can be a bit of a mission to get your toenails pinned. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. But having a disability actually motivates me. Holy <laughs> sh. <laughs> Attitude was made with funding from New Zealand on air.